please enjoy this special Advent reading for the Candle of Hope. From far and wide, we come together on a journey to the manger. With hope in our hearts, we wait expectantly for our world to change. As we light the first candle of Advent, the candle of hope, we remember to keep God's light shining brightly for all to see. This candle reminds us that God's hope and light are bright change to our world. Lord, this Advent season begins in difficult times and in unfamiliar ways. Keep us, help us stay awake to your presence, O Lord that hope may prevail within our souls. Focus our hearts on your promised change in our world, that others may see hope and love growing deep within us and feel comfort through our actions in your precious Son's name, we pray. Amen.
Our scripture reading today comes from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on things on earth, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ and God. Let's join together in prayer. Precious and loving God, we thank you for all the ways that hope thrives in our lives. We thank you that we have reached this Advent season so that we can see these four elements of being grow into the being that provides grace to the entire world. Be with us today as we look at this conversation of hope and how that we can be grateful in the hard moments. In your son's precious and loving name, I pray. Amen. Behold, I look on things of above and not on things below. I have some issues at times when I hear the scripture that I use because I feel at times that there becomes an imbalance in that thing. And as we talk about heavenly things and as we talk about worldly, earthly things, we begin to develop this line of division that does not allow us to look for the places where God is actually fully active. I want to explain that and we'll get into this. And I, I picked this I picked pick this scripture very specifically and I picked this song today very specifically because I want to communicate the necessity of being able to be grateful grateful, grateful in moments of fear, worry, and concern. I, I feel that is where the presence of Jesus Christ thrives. In the moments that we worry, we are fearful, but we step forward anyway and exist in a heart of gratitude to see the active growth that's happening and what's going on. So I made the statement, so here it comes. If you know me, you know me, and you know I'm gonna say this. I do need to propose that I do not believe that God makes bad things happen for us to grow, but I do believe we, we can grow when bad things happen. I'll say it again. I do not believe that God makes bad things happen for us to grow, but I do believe that we have the potential of growth when bad things happen. So there, I've laid it out. I want to look at that today as we look at the candle of hope because I'm hoping as we go through this this series on the the uh, on these videos that I want us to be able to see I want us to see that God is vibrant in the darkness. Now, a few weeks ago, I used the narrative of being able to go home again. I will use the narrative of there is a light in the darkness. I will use the narrative of finding places that we can be acceptive and included, especially in the times that we feel excluded and ignored. There, there's a lot of that that's going to go through this because... If we look at the time fear in this in this Advent journey, almost said Lent, <laughs> this Advent journey, we are looking at an, a, a collection of individuals, the entire world, that have been waiting for a very specific individual to arrive to fulfill some needs in their lives, to fulfill needs that they cannot care for on their own, to be the difference in situations, the radical difference in situations that can produce hope, love, joy, and peace within some very dark, dark moments of despair. So that's why I picked this song today, this Alanis Morissette song, Thank You. And it's why I picked this scripture. I, when I hear the scripture sometimes, and I'll, I'll go ahead and share the negativity first, and then we'll get into the positivity. When I hear this 
the scripture. We should set our things on hearts and minds on things above and not on things below. I I get stuck in this moment and I think that Andrew Lloyd Webber voiced my concern the best and uh, his uh, musical Jesus Christ Superstar as he uses the phrase in the opening overture, the opening uh, song, too much heaven on their minds that they have too much heaven on their minds just requoting the title of the song and the lyric and i i see this scripture use that we should set our eyes on things above and not on things below in a very strongly negative context within the this lyric i see too many friends with their eyes set on heaven uh, that they would be more willing to allow hurting individuals to hurt more at the benefit of being focused on heavenly things and and trying to uh, achieve heavenly agendas so we'll address that a little bit more and that's the negativity that i see in this scripture but i I want to draw upon the positivity because here's the thing. We've been called through our gospel message in Matthew 28 to go. To go into all nations to our, our, our theme this year, this annual conference year, uh, is to, in the California Pacific Annual Conference, is to look for places of nourishment, to nourish to nourish ourselves and the nourish communities. And when I look at this word nourish and think about the scripture that I'm using today, we nourish ourselves by setting our eyes on heavenly things, but not at the expense of being present and active in the lives of those who are hurting within our everyday. I think of the Lord's Prayer as I ponder this conversation and the pondering of on earth as it is in heaven. We're called not just to strive for a heavenly realm, but we are called to become active elements, to interact, to care for, to hold the hands of our dear friends who are hurting and find themselves in need and to care for them in a place that we make a, a, a heavenly redemption for dear friends who need to be seen and heard. So, again, going back to the negativity in this, there are different ways that I've seen us stumble through the negativity and cause more hurt than I have seen in the positive context of being individuals who are willing to create a nurturing environments that hold the hands of our dear friends who want to be seen, want to be heard, want to be shown that they are cared for by the kingdom, by making the kingdom a place on earth. Uh, Belinda Carlisle from the Go-Go's just came into my mind and making heaven a place on earth. That's what we are called for. So let's look at the song for a moment, this Alanis Morissette song, Thank You. And as I ponder through this challenge that we have of being caregiver supporters, going to all nations to be caregivers, not being so focused on heavenly things that we neglect the individuals who need help and care. When I look at this Alanis Morissette song, I look at the struggle that we all have and this challenge of being grateful and finding the candle of hope in some hard places. This, this, this song has sort of this conflicting voice that goes through it that I just love. Her narrative is an individual saying thank you and finding a place of growth in places that we normally see as hard and hurtful places. Thank you, Terram. Thank you, 
Disillusionment. Thank you. I, I don't have the lyrics in front of me, but I, I'll play the song before this if YouTube allows me. And uh, but there is this there is this just there is this conflict that goes on in this song of an individual that has the ability to show gratitude for the things that normally become crippling for others. And when I think about the light of hope that we celebrate in Advent, that's what we need. We need to be willing to even be able to see the slimmest spark of hope as we're going through some places of worry and concern. Again, I'm striving to re-communicate the narrative that I don't believe that God makes bad things happen for us to grow, but I do believe that we can have growth in bad things. One of the things about hope is if we even just have a spark of it, it can help us journey through some of the darkest areas of our being. And as I push this further, combining the narrative of this Alanis Morissette song, if we are able to not just see hope in the dark places, but also find a place of gratitude for some of the hard places, then we begin to see the empowering light of hope that can carry us through the situation. So right now, you can hear some voices in the background. I'm at my son's karate class. And when I think about hope, even small doses of hope that spark gratitude through things, especially small doses of hope that sparks gratitude in things that are scary and worrisome, I think about the philosophy that is shared through my son's karate class. My son has some great karate instructors that has been molding his life for almost 10 years. And the biggest thing that I see within this, and when you think about karate, you, you immediately think about conflict. I mean, uh, the martial arts, the combat sports, uh, karate can have this narrative of being combative, uh, fighting. I, I mean, when you look at media, we kind of see the martial arts exist in shows like Cobra Kai that I kind of had to stop watching because it just frustrated me, the, the imbalance of what karate is and isn't that's displayed in that. Uh, we see the other places. We see it in Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, Chuck Norris, Steven Seagal. We, we see all of these people that have this combative uh, imagery of the martial arts. But what I see when my son is in karate is actually something that has built an element of hope in his life. It's something that has given him passion and purpose and drive. It is something that has come in that has given him a focal point to focus on that really helped with some very negative areas of his being and has improved him for who he is. So I look at this narrative and I think about a, a young child who had a hard time staying focused in school, but as soon as he found a moment of focus and drive within the martial arts, he improved at school. When I saw moments of growth and focus through the martial arts, I saw an individual that has been willing to be focused on issues that are important to him and become a vocal advocate for them. As much as being a leader within our conference, CalPAC Annual Conference uh, Youth Leadership, to being a vocal advocate for he and our LGBTQIA plus siblings as an advocate of support and care. I, you, the, when I think about this candle of hope and watch my own son's journey through the martial arts, and I think about this Alanis Mor Morissette song being thankful with moments of gratitude, even in conflicting, combative pay places. I, I see this reality of a light of hope and, the, and even what a spark of it can do to transform lives. 
I want us to think about that for a moment because here's here's another narrative, a narrative that exists within the negativity of the scripture that I've chosen to use today. There used to be this prayer phrasing that I heard. I heard it so frequently growing up. And and there is a sincere a sincere hope in this. So I'm not I'm not speaking negatively towards the individuals that shared it, but I I can't I can't brush around it. I am speaking negatively around the intent of the phrasing. There used to be this prayer phrase that I heard not just from one person from many in my uh, foundational years of my faith development and then the individuals called for the return of Christ. It was all comes all come quickly Lord Jesus. Return quickly Lord Jesus. Now there is, an, there is a beautiful intent in that. And the individuals that I heard share this prayer, beautiful, beautiful friends, were very, very beautiful friends, mentors, and what have you in my life. But there is this intent of, please take me back to this heavenly realm so I don't have to be a part of the hurt and pain that exists in this place. And there is a beautiful sentiment even in that phrasing. But it's not a sentiment that I feel that it exists within our true calling as people of faith. And it's definitely not a sentiment that exists in Christ's words in Matthew 28 that Christ calls us to go to all places, even the places of discomfort and worry, and especially in the places of hurt and pain, we're called to go to those places. And we're not called to return to a heavenly realm and avoid them. We are called to become the advocates to, excuse me, <laughs> to walk into these places and and to share hope, a light of hope for individuals. Not not a transforming hope that, that forces people to fit into the framework of what we think our heavenly realm is, but places of hope that shows hey you are beautiful and vibrant for who you are and there is a place of gratitude within the journey that you're a part of you know just for me to just for me to be able to make that statement is why i may pick this song today because as much as individuals suffer and kind of being in some hurtful places of where they need to experience hope and they need to see the light of hope to carry them through. I feel the people who are called to be the caregivers need to see that hope and that gratitude as well. And the, to be in places of gratitude for the differences. Because I've even seen an, an excusing of Christ's gospel call to go to all places and transform them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I've shared it both ways. If you look through translations, it's shared in both ways. But if you look at the translation of the world words, we begin to see this narrative that actually also points towards the heart of the person that is participating in it. Let's look at the difference between transformation and baptism okay transformation is this act to go in and change things to change them to radically readjust them so that they fit a certain Im image if we are called to transform the image the world into the image of jesus christ we immediately have to one apply a definition of what the image of jesus christ looks like and how do we apply that image or, or, if we look at the phrasing of transformation, we go out and we try to change something to look like the way that we think it should look. And so that's the too much heaven on their minds mindset of, of, of that word. But if we look at the word baptism and we look at the uh, spiritual and the liturgical actions of what baptism is... Um, there's a little bit more of a freedom in that. And there's a little bit more of an opportunity of being grateful in the differences when we look at things like this. Here's the difference between that. If transformation is to change something to look like something else, but our own self-defined definition of what the absolute is, 
then that's a box that we shove people into and boxes are harmful. But if we look at Matthew 28 through the interpretive word of baptism, and we interpret that word baptism as a moment that our being interacts with the being of God, our response to grace. Anytime that we respond to grace and we begin to interact with the being of God, to interact, there has to be some differences. To interact, there has to be a little bit of me and a little bit of God. So instead of transforming something into a box, we find a way to interact. And when we find ways to interact in our differences, when we find ways to interact with our worries and our concerns, like in the Solanus Morissette song, if we find ways to be thankful in our moments of worry of concern, then hope thrives. I can never fit in another person's box, and that is demeaning and diminishing. I can never fit in another person's box. What I can do is to use the fruits of the Spirit, the spiritual gifts that the Apostle Paul talks about so frequently, and he talks about the differences, and the Apostle Paul talks about how not everyone has the same spiritual gifts, and some people have this, and some people have that. Even the Apostle Paul talks about the necessity of, of inclusivity within differences. And when we look at the word baptism, we have the opportunity to be grateful for the differences and to be grateful for the moments of worry and concern and conflict and to be grateful in things that seem challenging. And through that moments of gratefulness, we can see the light of hope. So I want you to hold on to those things. I'm going to say a prayer. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my son's karate class. But... I want you to hold on to that reality. As we look at this journey with the candle of hope this week, I want us to remember that hope is vibrant when we can celebrate who we are and the differences within who we are. When we can find a way to travel with our worries and concerns and grow through them again god not making bad things happen for us to grow but for us to find growth in bad things and we can find some freedom in the candle of hope just hold on to those things thank you for allowing me to be a part of this conversation and i believe that um, throughout advent i'm gonna try to find some more common themes and i i won't vo voice those things this week but uh you may find some common music or, and so forth through these conversations may the peace of the lord jesus christ be with you all my name is the reverend michael drew davis god is love amen <laughs>